Hey there, I'm Peter Beeth, and in this video I'm going to show you some quick and easy ways to use a laser cutter to engrave signage of different kinds. Um, there are plastics available which have a veneer on top of them which you can uh, cut away to expose a color underneath. Uh, the color choices though are limited and I found that there are easier ways to do this without having to go out and special order plastics. I'll cover some of my methods, including stenciling, and then I'll try to set a t-shirt on fire. First, my laser can do two kinds of operations. A vector engrave, which traces shapes, like letters here, or a raster, which fills in shapes using a side-to-side -side motion. Here are a handful of items which I have engraved and also cut. Um, so well, let me start off with the easiest one. Uh, basically, it's a piece of wood that's been painted, and on the top is the raster engrave, and here is a vector cut. As you can see, the raster engrave has burned the paint away, whereas the vector cut has actually burned into the wood and given it this black outline. So taking that a step further, what I did was uh, actually combine the two. And at least with my full spectrum laser, this is a little difficult because it, uh, I think you have to do the raster first and then the vector next. If you do it the other way around, the home position seems to shift each time that you do it and uh, it's all off. But anyway, basically what this is, is uh, I actually take the mirror, this is mirrored acrylic, I put it upside down, and um, then I do a raster engrave of some text which has been mirrored, in this case Hybrid Mojo. Then I do a vector cut to cut the outline. Once I have this piece, I take it, put it down, and use a rattle can to spray it. You can see another example of this approach uh, right here with this logo. Uh, this is actually, in the back there's mirrored acrylic, and then on the front there is clear acrylic, which I've hot glued on to this. And then this is a basically what I did was an illustrator um, took this font, wrote Beerlitzer, and then I did, uh, it wasn't a stroke, it was basically you can take the path and expand it. I think it was called outside something or other. Anyway, um, what you then do is you first do a raster engrave, and uh, then uh, you do a vector cut around the outside. Then I use the rattle can again. Now uh, one thing to point out is uh, you need to have a contrasting color. So even this white uh, does, unfortunately, contrasts against the orange, but not so well against the mirror. So I probably would have been better off with a much darker color. Now you can also take the paint off of acrylic. This is quarter inch acrylic, which um, I've painted and then done in raster and a vector engraving. You can see, if you look a little close, if my camera will focus that close, and it will that I did this the wrong way around. I did the vector first and then the raster and with the full spectrum laser uh, that I have, at least the software, um, it offsets just a little bit and you can see it's shifted to the right or the left <laughs> depending on what your point of reference is. In any case, um, the effect, you still get the idea. It's basically the raster engrave took the paint off. Uh, I thought that the vector might give a nice cool edge but you can't actually really tell. So, that's another way to do it. Finally, here's some fake leather, and this is a vector cut with very low power, and uh, actually this is very cool. It's got a kind of brownish color to it. It does not rub off. I actually tried this on cotton, a cotton t-shirt, and it did not work at all. Um, you can see it, but then it rubs off, and if you uh, use any more power, the t-shirt the actually falls apart or catches on fire. Um, now with an odd piece like this, it tends to curve, so I use actually this double-sided tape that's very thin, and I just apply it to the back, and as you can see, it sticks. And you can do that with a lot of different things. In fact, this material which all these pieces are on is uh, actually light diffuser material, and it tends to curl as well over time. Um, and I cut that a lot. It uh, works really well for lettering. In fact, I have one letter here, in fact, is that letter. It's stiff enough that it you can actually work with it, um, but thin enough that uh, it cuts really fast and it uh, doesn't poke out a whole lot. So 
there you go. So here's an example of doing uh, engraving the hard way. What I've done here is actually have two layers of acrylic. One's this dark gray, and then the other one's a sign white. And what I did was I uh, actually put this down, uh, I printed it backwards uh, uh, so that it was mirrored, so I'm from the back side. And then when I wanted to pick it up, obviously the letter started falling out. So I slipped a piece of paper underneath, carried it all over, um, had it face down, and then I carefully put shugu. And normally I might use epoxy or something, but uh, it, or actually even, I used a hot glue gun a whole lot. But basically this sets too quickly. Um, so I, shugu takes about 24 hours. So I carefully use the end of a zip tie to apply it to the lettering here. And I thought, hey, this is great. I'm going to leave it like this. I'm going to put the dark gray down on it. And uh, once it dries, I'll turn it around and pull up the rest uh, and it'll be all good. Didn't actually work out that well. It was very hard to apply the glue. And for the small letter the lettering, I had to do it uh, by hand. But it actually wasn't too bad. As you can see, I left off one star, which I'm going to, just because it's only one piece, I'm going to quickly do using just a little bit of hot glue. This hot glue is like a miracle worker. I do so much with it. But you do need to move quickly. Much better. And my espresso machine's ready. Oh, caffeine. Here I've laser cut um, <clears throat> writing into uh, blue painter's tape and some packing tape. I, and then I've attached it to uh, just something I can paint on and uh, spray paint it. And what I want to do is if I pull it off I want to see so when you, whenever you're doing stencils um, the danger is always to get the paint getting underneath the stencil and then you get blurry edges um, so you, you can first by having a nice tacky tape uh, for the stencil that helps it stick and then you can also spray actually from kind of far back and do light coats and that's helpful but anyways uh, which tape is going to be better so let's see what packing tape came out like uh, not so nice I mean, I'm sorry this is Blue painter's tape. Let's see what packing tape looks like. Much, much better, but still kind of homemade looking. So, I don't know. I think maybe I did uh, too heavy of a coat first off, but uh, I can already tell that for the next try, uh, I, would, I, would, I would use the packing tape, although it's not what you'd normally use for painting. Stencils are, are interesting because you have to make sure that the pieces do not fall fall out. Looks like my stencil is finished cutting. Open up the lid. I want to inspect it that it's actually fully cut through. It's hard to see, but I can actually see the diffuser underneath. And now I had alignment issues and I could have continual alignment issues, so it always cuts better on the upper left than the lower right. Here's my stencil. Hold together rather well, actually. Although, it always requires a little bit of fiddling. So I've got this box, which I want to cover up the HP logo, so I've painted it orange. And I'm going to put my own logo. Painter's tape. Now, with stencils, you don't want the paint to get underneath the stencil. So you'd like to have it a good fit against the frame. And uh, actually, doing light coats and staying back. Well, I'm going to go for gold here. I'm going to do a two-color stencil. Color number one. Better day. Come on. There's my cans running out. All right, well, uh, I don't have more green. But I do have this gold. Oh, look at that. Give that a minute to dry. All right, it's reasonably dry enough. Peel, peel back a little. Basically, why I'm impatient. Huh. Not bad. Now I'm gonna just offset it a little and spray a second layer. Um, and it's gonna look like a drop shadow. So how about? Something like this. Next coat will be just white. Of 
course, it's a terrible choice because it's hard to cover up the other stuff. But. Well, I'd say they come out pretty darn good. Other than overspray right there. Looks great. The overspray is easily fixed. So. A little masking tape would have kept me from doing that, but. Yeah. Nope. So we'll demonstrate a raster engrave and a vector engrave on a t-shirt. I have got my text. I do create outlines under Pathfinder. I merge the shapes. I start my engraving software and print to it. All right. Let's try a low power vector cut first. I've got my t-shirt laid out flat and the laser adjusted. I'm just going to use some area here. Close the lid because it knows about that. I'm going to use just 5% uh, power. And let's go. Well, look at that. Kind of actually works. Unfortunately, once you start rubbing it, you can see that it all smudges away. I'm going to bump the power up from 5% to, let's say, 20. Let's go. And there we go. It's much more noticeable now. However, it will also rub away and now in fact the shirt is so degraded it starts coming apart. Well we can do a raster. I'm going to knock down the speed just a little bit, say 85%, and I'm going to use low DPI. Much faster and actually better results. There you go. The t-shirt is pretty much destroyed now. But well, I promised to set it on fire, so let's see how we can do that. I'll just turn the cutting speed down to 50 and the power up to 100%, and that should uh, give me plenty of power. It actually cuts too well. You can see it's burned the shirt, but not really set it on fire. I really need to go slower, I think, and uh, maybe less power. Let the heat build up. Well, you can see the t-shirt is smoldering a little bit in places. It's not really bursting into flames as I wanted, though. At 10% power, or at 100% power and 10% speed, you can see the t-shirt is smoldering as this vector cut progresses. Oh, look at that. So nice. Oh yeah. And uh, you can see here that the uh, shirt has bunched up and is in the laser's path. The shirt has bunched up and is in the laser's path, so it's uh, definitely on fire there. So there you go, some cheap and easy ways to get more versatility out of the laser cutter.